What I have here is my throttle interface device and I wanted to demonstrate how it works. So what I'm going to do is show you just basically how it filters out some of the functions on the throttle input and how the output is based on uh, how quickly you move the throttle. So I'll start it running here. So here we go, we have the traces running and now I'm going to slowly turn the throttle about a quarter turn. And the bottom trace is the throttle input, the top trace is the output of the throttle interface. So as you can see, it's lagging behind and increasing very slowly, but if I twist fast, it goes up and it's smooth. Now as the trace comes back around, I'm going to drop this down a little bit. You'll see it comes back down quick, but if I snap the throttle off, it too will snap off. There's about a 120 millisecond delay from the time I let off the throttle until it actually snaps completely off. So you do feel a tiny little bit when you're riding, but it's for the most part not noticeable and I've only noticed it at wide open throttle if I'm really, really hunting for it. So let me restart this here. So here's an example of snapping wide open throttle from a dead stop. As you can see it shoots up pretty quickly and then tapers off until it gets all the way up to the full throttle position. And I'll stop it there. Restart here. So now I'll twist the throttle at about a medium pace. And you can see it follows it pretty closely but it's more smooth. And while it doesn't look like a lot on the trace, you really notice it when you're riding. It really helps with starting off a high-powered bicycle to have this set up on here because what it does is the faster you twist the throttle, the faster the response is. So if I do a very slow twist on the throttle, you'll see it ramps up very slow and you can see that right here at this point. This is the throttle input and you can see how it stretched that entire point out from here over to here over a period of about oh that's about 400 or close to 400 350 milliseconds somewhere around there based on the uh, oh I'm sorry I have the traces set at two seconds of division so that is about over a period of uh, two and a two and a half seconds maybe three seconds it did it over that and it was a very very slow throttle input to get it to do that so now this is currently set up for my bicycle as I was riding it tonight at 6 kilowatts. It is a crow motor running 100 volts at 60 amps. So it's inputting about 6 kilowatts with sag I'm seeing about 5.7 kilowatts going into the motor. And it's actually very easy to control on high power. I've had zero issues starting off. I don't even need to use the three power switch. It's just not even necessary because this gives so much more resolution to the throttle at low speed. And it also makes it nice and high speed. So I'm going to restart here and show you what happens. One of the things that I found that I can do with this is I can actually revert back to a speed while I'm moving a lot easier. So if I bring the throttle position up to where I have it marked here, this is about two-thirds throttle, and I snap it off, and then I quickly go back to it, you'll see it comes back up to it, but instead of having that sharp rise like it does there, here is the throttle input, and you can see on the throttle input this is where I completely let off of it. This is where it was sitting on the output of the throttle interface. And of course it drops down, comes all the way across, and then the throttle input, I snapped it back very close to the original position. I did, I did it very quickly, we're talking maybe a quarter of a second. And here it tapers up, it filters out a lot of the uh, excess input and it steps up and then it curves off to meet back up to where it was. And I don't have any uh, delay in there like I had talked about on the forum. so. What I've done is this is all just based off of the throttle filtering mechanism, based off of acceleration and also the throttle input buffer. So I'll demonstrate the throttle input buffer right now. It actually shows uh, 
I have it set kind of uh, a little bit on the lower side because I was playing around with it on my bike to see where I liked it. So what I'll do is uh, you'll notice on the bottom trace I'll start jiggling the throttle like I'm going over bumps and you'll see it's reacting like that. But on the output it's fairly smooth and I'm moving the throttle about a quarter inch in each direction. So it averages it out but if you come up it'll go right back to being smooth there. So when you're riding over rough terrain it makes it pretty nice. The only downside I found is that when snapping back to a throttle position like I did there I went a little bit slower it doesn't come up as quick so you kind of want to snap back to it quickly and then be able to back off of it to find where you were. It takes a little bit of getting used to it with the throttle but I found after riding with it for about 10 minutes I pretty much adjusted to it and when I went back to trying to ride without the throttle interface uh, it wasn't very pretty I almost lost control of the bike. So it works overall pretty well. So what I'm going to go over next is show the uh, the throttle adjustments and what happens when, you, when doing these. There's once you set the minimum voltage it's pretty much ready to go from there and the wide open throttle voltage needs to be set with the throttle set all the way at the maximum hooked up to the bike with the wheel off the ground of course unless you want your bike to take off across the room on you I'm sure we've all done that at one point or another though so once you get the voltages set to the proper to the proper settings that you need so that you're able to achieve no wheel speed with the throttle at the minimum and maximum wheel speed with it at its maximum with the throttle position at its maximum then you need to start tweaking the throttle adjustment pots that are on here they are named delay and buffer so the first pot I'm going to show you about is the delay pot which controls how quickly the throttle responds when you twist it the faster you twist it the faster your acceleration rate is going to be twist it slow and you get more resolution because it adds in a delay and slowly steps the voltage up to your desired output so I'm going to reduce it all the way to the minimum right now which is counterclockwise on the trim pot so I'm going to give it a several turns counterclockwise and do the exact same thing when I snap it up you'll see it has a slower response now because what this has done is it has reduced the number that is used in the micro microcontroller that is used to calculate the acceleration rate of the throttle so now I can adjust really slow and you'll see it comes up much much slower compared to previously. Now this is really good if you have a high powered bike this is what really lets you dial in your throttle response. So now the throttle is pinned at 100% and now I'm all the way off the throttle. So it doesn't have any response with letting off the throttle per se. However if you are at a certain position and you back off the throttle it will gradually drop down now while it's doing this I have not noticed any issues when riding um, I've been looking for any kind of inconsistencies when riding to see if it will cause any issues with trying to continue to move forward and it hasn't when I back off the throttle a little bit the bicycle slows down lower speed than it was previously and it works pretty well uh, I haven't had any issues when it comes to it but I've only probably put about 10 miles on this model so far this revision of the program but this is by far the best one that I've come up with so what I'll do now is I'll increase the delay so the acceleration will go faster so you can see what happens here this is going to be more like a one to one ratio you'll see the rise is much quicker it has a faster attack rate the line that you see over here jumps up right away even with a slow twist of the throttle and a, a quick twist of the throttle takes it up even higher you can see it runs almost right to max and it's almost matching the initial throttle input uh, of the bottom line so here's a very slow increase to show what it's doing and it's pretty much matching at one for one, one, for one on the output and I'm almost
plus that max throttle there is max throttle. So one to one, pretty much self-explanatory. You really need to kind of feel how it reacts on the bicycle to get a feel for what it's actually doing versus just looking at these graphs because the graphs while you see them we're dealing in small amounts and it's kind of hard to describe what it's doing so let me turn this delay setting back down closer to where I had it in the beginning and then I will show you the buffer setting so now I'm going to reduce the buffer and I'm going to reduce it all the way down to zero. Zero is going to mean, well, technically it's not zero, it's one. So it's going to be one to one. So it's only going to average over one. So it's a technically a one to one input. Okay, so now I'm all the way down. So my input is now one to one. So if I bring the throttle up to here and I start jiggling it, you'll see that it matches exactly the input and output. There is no filtering. So whatever happens on the throttle, happens on the output. Now I, what I'll do here now is I'll start increasing that. Here's a little bit more and I'll give you a, another example jiggling the throttle so you can see that it is now filtering out some of that initial noise that is being created by the throttle moving. Once again I'm moving the throttle about a quarter inch and eighth plus or minus of where the uh, original throttle point is right here and as the buffer increases this is of course just going to get smoother and smoother but as a side effect of this it is going to create more of a delay in the throttle rise time so do a reset now I have a lot of buffering in here and you can see the throttle comes up a little bit slower than it did before and here's the jiggling and you can see even with a slow jiggle it takes quite a, a slow movement to get any kind of output movement from where it is compared to the input but it still is able to work fairly well so the combination of the throttle buffering along with the acceleration setting which is labeled as delay will make a large difference in the way your controller behaves and if the buffer is set all the way to the max, I doubt anybody will need to set it all the way to the max. I just put it in there just in case. I figured the more range, the better. I like people to have uh, the full adjustability because I don't know what people are going to put these on. If somebody could put something on that's like 20 kilowatts, who knows? And they might actually need that level of filtering. So here we go. I have it now set to the maximum buffering. Let me bring it up to a range where you can see it a little bit better. Now make large slow throttle movements. And when it's dropping off there, it's dropping off because I'm allowing it to sit down too low and I have a, a background pro process running in there that says if it detects the throttle is going closed, that it actually drops down really quick. That's not all the way closed, that's all the way closed. So you can see it drops off. So it prevents you from when you let off the throttle quickly because you need to to keep the motor from continuing forward. What I want to show you here is just the basic layout of the board. This is just a demo board, not what the final version is going to look like. Uh, if you're wondering what this button is here, I use this for these two serial lines here. This is what I use to flash during development. Uh, the ICs do come socketed. This is a digital potentiometer and then I have two emitter follower BJT NPN transistors set up so that you can actually get dual throttle output and they match quite nicely. Uh, on the input over here is the, the throttle input. There's a diode underneath there and the heat shrink to help with any issues if you have a short on the throttle wire. There's an algorithm that runs on the inside of this that will detect any issues on the throttle and shut the throttle output to zero if there if there's a problem detected just like the controller does uh, on anything on the output no none of those features have been disabled for the output if a throttle issue occurs like if the ground disconnects the controller if it's programmed to have bar protect enabled it will still disconnect it so the pots that are on here 
for adjustment are the minimum voltage throttle which you need to adjust first this last one is the maximum voltage which you need to have the throttle set wide open throttle while you're adjusting hooked up to the bike and then this one is labeled delay but this is actually the one that sets your acceleration rate based on how quickly you're turning the throttle and this one is your throttle input buffer for buffering, buffering out any bumps I made a small prototype area here just in case I wanted to add something or needed to make an adjustment on changes and then I have a few other pins called out for future things I might do uh, one of the things I, I'm thinking about adding is a hall, hall sensor input so that I'm able to get wheel speed and make adjustments based on that so that's pretty much how the throttle interface works and is set up in a nutshell. I hope this explains things a little bit better for everyone so that they have a clearer picture of what this actually does. Thank you very much.